Hello. How's everyone doing? Welcome to Meow's Cafe. My name is Ginger, the special guest for today's topic. I had a gold python when I was in fifth grade. Without albinism, it was yellow with dark brown patterns. A herbalist set up a golden snake after school. I crouched and watched it joyously and wouldn't leave. The herbalist, seeing my interest, offered to sell it to me for $100. He explained it was a golden python that could grow quite large. I couldn't think of any other place to get such an amount besides my mom's herbal medicine shop. My mom never bothered when I took coins from her drawer for sweets. This time, I ran into the store, pulled open the drawer, and took out $100. While my mother was busy with a minor surgery, she heard the sound and reminded me not to buy colored candy. I bought the snake, and the herbalist, as he packed up the herbs, instructed me, it's not poisonous and needs live mice for food. Feed it every three days, and it won't eat anything dead. I headed home and made a bed for it in my mother's medicine box, lined with my small blanket. It kept moving around, trying to climb higher. Noticing it couldn't climb out, it resigned itself, coiled up into a small heap that looked like cow dung. It was an endearing image that I cherished. My mother was preparing mole removal ointments using newborn blind mice and herbs, which were ground into a paste and applied to the skin to remove moles and freckles. We had regular suppliers, so I asked my mom to keep a nest of live mice every three days to feed my pet. Assuming I had adopted another kitten, she did so without question. In return, she asked me to tell our neighbor that she was ready to treat her freckles. That's how I fed the python over the winter. It grew a lot, as long as my mom's rolling pin and even thicker. One rainy and snowy day, I touched my dad's pigeon cage for little pigeons. I found eight of them for the snake, but it didn't rush to eat as usual. It lazily hid in the corner, indifferent to my calls. I dare not say that I raise a snake upstairs. I ask my dad, my classmate's snake didn't eat food today, was it because it's too cold and had a cold? He reassured me, the snake is hibernating. It will sleep for a few months and then wake up. The following year, I found more suitable food for it. My cousin raised a pair of rabbits that inexplicably gave birth to a litter of rabbits every month. She was scared her father would find out and brought them to me. It occasionally overate and would sleep for a week. When it woke up, the rabbits had grown a bit bigger, and it continued to eat. During summer vacation, it was more than 30 centimeters taller than me when it was not coiled up. It liked sleeping next to me but didn't wrap around me. I felt happy when it occasionally greeted me when I came home, usually, it was asleep. It was not like a creature with no intelligence. When I prepared a basin of water and called it to bathe, it would crawl in. After the bath, it knew to crawl onto the towel waiting for me to dry it. After drying, it would crawl back to the nest on the balcony, or to my bed. It has never chased, bitten, or made any offensive actions. The only drawback was its excrement was incredibly nauseating. The pungent smell was so overwhelming that till now, I feel nauseous at the recollection. I thought that our happy life could last until I even thought of bringing it when I get married. That is, until that year's mid-autumn festival was approaching. My mother asked my sister to go into my room to fetch the wooden box engraved with our drugstore's name. She needed it for the festival gift. The tragedy began the moment my sister couldn't open the door. She had no intention of looking for the key to my room since all the rooms in our house were never locked. She immediately assumed that my lock was broken. The locksmith she called managed to get it open quickly. Just as he was about to ask for his payment after pushing the door open, he spotted a large snake on the floor, as thick as an arm, raising its head toward him and hissing with its blackish-gray forked tongue. He screamed in fright. My sister, on the other hand, was surprisingly silent. Don't worry, she's fine. She immediately fainted. The locksmith quickly locked the door and carried my sister off to the pharmacy. While on the way, my sister woke up crying and started running with the locksmith. My parents were in a frenzy at the pharmacy. When they heard the story, my mom got scared and summoned professional snake catchers. However, my dad calmly stated, no need. It's your younger daughter's pet. Then, I was in class when I suddenly saw my dad looking in through the hallway glass window with a gloomy face. My teacher called me out, saying someone was looking for me. I was trying to recall if I did anything that might get me in trouble either today or the day before. I couldn't figure out why, but my dad looked so sad that I assumed his mom must have passed away. The moment I stepped out of the class, I broke down into tears. I approached my dad in tears and hugged him around the waist, sobbing while comforting him, Grandma has gone to heaven, don't be sad, dad. My dad was taken aback. He kicked me to the ground, pulled out his belt, held onto his pants with one hand and whipped me with his belt in the other, shouting your grandma is dead. Your grandma is dead. 
The teachers stopped teaching, anxiously standing at their classroom doors, sternly telling the students to sit down and not watch. Several male teachers held my dad back, advising him to grieve in peace that death is a natural part of life, and hitting me wouldn't help. Angry and pale, my dad pointed shakily at me, this little brat. She's been keeping a worm at home. A worm bigger than me. She scared her sister into a faint and even dared to curse her grandmother to death. The PE teacher, as enthusiastic as a husky, ran off to find the snake catchers. A few male teachers, out of curiosity and excitement to get to my house quicker, got the key to the school's side gate from the head teacher. Right behind this gate was the back garden of my house. My dad ran to the pharmacy to get the house key. With a group of people following him, they all started to discuss at the stairway leading to the third floor. Taking advantage of their distraction, I slipped to my room, quickly unlocked the door, dashed in, and immediately locked it. There was a collective gasp outside. My dad exclaimed excitedly, See! I told you! This worm is her pet. They tried to scare me by saying the animal would eat me when it got hungry. I held my Burmese python, sobbing uncontrollably. The snake catcher arrived with a sack and a hook. As he peeked inside the room through the door crack, he couldn't help shouting, This, this, this is too damn big. This ain't a worm, it's a python. It could squeeze the life out of you once it wraps itself around you. The locksmith tried to unlock the door by extending his hand in, but I was quick to lock it again from the inside. When my mom came home, she heard about it but I still didn't open the door. She said if I wanted to live with it, I'd have to take it away. She asked me how much money I needed. I asked for 2000. Mom said, everyone back off. I'll get the money. You take it and get the hell out of here with that thing. I packed a few clothes, waited for my mom to bring the money, left it at the top of the stairs, and called the python out. It seemed a bit agitated and didn't want to come out. I squatted down, hugged it, and talked to it until it decided to slowly crawl out. As it reached the door, it turned back. Suddenly a pole came down from the ceiling with a wire loop at the end, which was thrown around its neck. It was hung in the air, with only its tail frantically whipping around on the floor, creating loud slaps. It was caught in an ambush and stuffed into a big sack and carried away. I tried to save it, weeping and biting, throwing a tantrum. In the end, my dad gave me a serious beating. By the time my Burmese python was taken away, it had grown larger than me, but it had never planned to eat me. Yeah, I admit I deserved that beating, but I'm still very upset every time I think of my losing pet. Okay, that's it. Have a good night guys. And thanks for the coffee. But tasted kinda bitter today.